Hello, uh, ArcStorming community. Welcome to the second webinar of um, ArcStorming. Uh, thanks to the um, around the competition, Teach on the Beach. My name is Irene Palomo, and I will be your host today. Um, hello. Well, I'm already seeing people from Namibia, Somalia. Hello. I, I'm not sure if it's morning, evening, and or afternoon but I'm very happy uh, that all of you are here with us today. I would like to start by um, apologizing for last week's uh, webinar, um, the problem we had uh, with the connectivity. I want to remember you, we were having a webinar with William Agbo, which is the uh, director of Teach on the Beach NGO, and he was in Busua, Ghana, and we were connecting with him, uh, so uh, the, he didn't have a stable connectivity, so we had to uh, cancel the live streaming, but we recorded the video uh, interviewing him, and he shared a lot of details of the work they do, and the new building they want us uh, help designing, so I encourage you to watch it uh, online. You can find it in our website or in our YouTube channel that I invite you to subscribe. Um, okay, so today we are in the second webinar. I remember you uh, from Arc, Arc Storming. We encourage and we support 100% uh, sustainable architecture. And we are devoted to sustainable materials, which can be either natural or recycled. And today we invited a very special, uh, an expert person. Hello from Brazil. Hi. Um, who um, is, uh, has expertise in one of our favorite materials, which can be uh, the one you choose for designing this uh, competition or not. Uh, you can use any any natural or recycled material. But in Africa, there is a lot of ram earth. And actually, um, the building that uh, Teach on the Beach has already built was using this material. So we decided to invite uh, Joel Eyes on, who is uh, the founder of Hive Earth and a prominent figure in the world of sustainable construction with more than 10 years of experience. Um, as I said, he co -found, she co-founded Hive Earth Studio in 2018, specializing in RAM Earth. And she will share with us um, today a lot of information about this material, how, you, how to use it, how to build with it. And I'm sure you will enjoy it. Before I welcome her into uh, the webinar, I would like also to remind you that tomorrow is the last uh, day to uh, have the early bird registration in the competition. So I encourage you to, to uh, use this opportunity and you can join the competition scanning the QR code on the screen. And Joel actually is one of our jury members in this competition. So I'm sure everything that she's going to share with us, it's going to be very interesting. Okay, so now I would like to invite Joel. Hello, Joel, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very glad and honored to have you today sharing with you. us uh, your expertise in RAM Earth. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited to speak to everyone today. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I already said we have people from everywhere. I see Namibia, Brazil, Italy, Mexico. Wow, so uh, Thank you so much, Joel. I will let you uh, right now to share your um, presentation. And I will uh, tell the audience that after Joel's presentation, we will have a Q&A uh, part where everyone can ask any question they want. So feel free to write it down on the comments. And after Joel's presentation of about 30 minutes, I will pop back in and I will ask some of your questions. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Okay, let me get my presentation up. Okay, can you see? Yes. Okay, are we all good? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. You can start, Joel. Okay. Great. 
Fantastic. I say thank you um, once again, um, Irene, for the opportunity um, to be a part of this um, competition. I'm really honoured when you reached out to me um, and I'm looking forward to speaking to everybody from all the different parts of, of the world. So, um, so yes, yeah, so, um, so as Irene said, I'm Joelle Eisen. I am the co-founder of Hive F Studio. So we are a multidisciplinary space based in Accra. So I co-founded it with my partner, Christian Dehir, who's a technical director. So we specialize in the use of locally sourced and eco-friendly materials for the use of construction, interior decor, art and design. Um, so as well as using earth, we use, we have used other, um, eco-friendly locally sourced materials to build with. Um, we have used um, palm kernel fiber as a stabilizer to make earth tiles, um, which we recently actually completed a project where we use earth tiles for the surfaces. We've used rice husk as well um, as a stabilizer for our unstabilized rammed earth walls. Um, and then we also do um, earth floors um, and then we we'll also do a little bit of, you know, art installations as well. We've worked at um, some private members clubs in Ghana where we've done um, Ramdev pots, Ramdev seating. And um, so, yeah, so as well as the construction, we also do interior decor, art and design with earth, as well as other locally sourced natural materials. So um, we started our studio back in 2018. Um, and the premise of our studio is to use locally sourced materials, um, but we get a lot of our influences from um, looking at what was done in the past. So Sankofa in the Akan language means going back to our past. So um, if you've seen any of our works before, um, you'll see that it's, um, you know, we use a lot of patterns, we use a lot of colours and layers and whatnot, and we get a lot of our influence from old, um, 18th century earth architecture in Ghana, as well as other um, earthen architecture that you find that you can find in a continent. So as you can see here, um, this is um, uh, um, it's quite a popular building in the Ashanti region of Ghana, um, where they use a lot of um, Adinkra symbols on the buildings. Um, and you can see that with our work as well, we use a lot of patterns in our walls to mimic 18th century earth and architecture in Ghana. Um, also here, um, you know, getting that influence from um, the, Ma the ancient Mali kingdom as well, um, how they used how they use earth, and then also you can see um, that they used um, bamboo slats as stabilizers as well in the wall, um, and then also here as well we get an our inference from old Cameroonian ancient architecture. So you can see here as very reflective in our work as well, the inspiration of the use of the patterns on the walls. Um, and then also we use a lot of colors in our earth as well. Um, we either use natural pigments where we um, get our colored pigments from rocks from around the area where we're building, or we use iron oxide pigments to um, color our walls. So it's very influential from the um, 18th century South African mud home. So we get a lot of our inspirations from different parts of the continent and um, from how they used to use before. Um, and then even us using rammed earth as um, a building technique. I always say that it's not something that we invented, it's not something that's new, it's been around for thousands of years. Um, rammed earth um, is very, I always say it's very similar to the traditional African mud home, but I guess with rammed earth today is something that's um, modernized. So when you go to the villages in Ghana, for example, the way they build, they use their hands, they select the best soils, they they make a, you know, a, a, a wet mix, and then they just use their hands to manually compress on top of each other. Um, obviously, whereas with rammed earth, we use formworks, we use rammers, and we can mechanically compress the wall so it's a lot stronger than the typical mud home but a lot of our influences in terms of the patterns the design and even technique is from traditional african architecture so what is randef so randef is both a building material and a building method um so 
when we say the rammed earth material, it's basically the process um, of which the actual material goes through for us to have our monolith monolithic wall. Um, and then um, the, the walls are actually made on site in situ by hand, or they can be mechanically compressed. Um, there are some companies that have actually advanced with rammed earth where they actually make prefab rammed earth, where they make it in one location and they can transport it. Um, but it's not something that we've looked into too much. So um, rammed earth construction or rammed earth architecture has a lot of advantages, um, particularly in, in our part of the world. So it's got high thermal mass, which is fantastic um, for building in the tropical climate because it helps to regulate the internal room temperature and keeping it very cool. Um, and then also, especially um, for countries along the equator like Ghana, it can be very, very humid, especially in the cities. So it helps to just keep the internal um, room temperature very cool. And also it takes up the moisture in the air as well. So it, it makes it very comfortable when you're inside a round earth building. It's great for controlling noise because of the thickness of the walls. Um, so if you're living in a very noisy city, like Accra, for example, it's fantastic um to um regulate the noise and just to keep the outdoor noise out um you know in fact even i remember when uh, we first started um building with ram death i think we built um 18 inch thick walls um and then i remember when in one of the rooms i took my phone in and i actually couldn't get mobile phone signal so that's how strong <laughs> the ram death walls can be and that's how good it is at keeping noise out so it's very good for noise so if you want to have like a recording studio or anything you can consider using ram death walls for that um they're load bearing as well so um because there's no mortar joints in between you don't need any iron rods or, or anything like that so um it's great at saving cost on buying iron rods um, it's sustainable, obviously, um, you know, using the earth around us, you know, using excavated earth makes it very sustainable. And it also makes it very circular as well, especially if you're um, building unstabilized rammed earth walls where you can just continue using the recycling the same earth over and over again if you wanted to. Um, it has a low carbon footprint, um, obviously using um locally sourced materials you don't have to go too far to get the materials that you need to build your building with um and also unlike concrete it doesn't go through uh, a process where you're taking the earth and you know you're you know heating it to a very high temperature to achieve what you need to build with um moisture control so as i was saying earlier if you're living in a place where it's very humid rammed earth walls are fantastic for just keeping the internal room dry and very comfortable and um, it keeps out pests as well um one problem um that we have with um traditional earth walls that you find in the typical mud homes and villages is that after a while sometimes you get termites going on the walls um and then they you know create holes and then making it not stable but with rammed earth because it's very very compressed and it's very strong you don't get a problem where termites can penetrate through at all so it's great for keeping and pests out. So I'm just going to take you through the rammed earth process. So in essence, rammed earth is basically you have your formwork and then you have your damp mix and then you pour your mix into your formwork and then you compress it. So we try to compress it to at least at, at the most half of its volume. So if we're um, pouring 100%, if we try to get it to down to about 50 40 to 50 percent of its volume and then you just keep on um pouring more mix on top and then you ram you pour more mix on top and you ram and you'll see um in this diagram here that you've got the different colored layers so this is a way that you can achieve the different layers as well so if you wanted to use different earth colors you can by just pouring in different different earth colors or if you wanted to um, um have pigments in your mix as well then you can do that you just add your pigment to your mix and then you just add that layer on and you can just add a different layer on and whatnot and then you achieve your your wall so um the formwork um when we when we are constructing our walls we always make sure that we um build our formwork first so the formwork is 
in my opinion, the most important part of the ram dev because if your formwork is not strong, then you can come out having wonky walls or walls that are not strong, walls that are not straight, or walls that have lines in it, um, or maybe um, you'll find that you're ramming and then the formwork is opening. So you've got to make sure that your formwork is very strong against your kicker. Um, so to make sure that you have perfect walls. So there are two types of formworks that you can have. So you can have already made formworks, um, which can be quite expensive, or you can have formworks that you make yourself on the site. So we make all of our formworks from scratch on the site. And the reason why we do this is number one, it makes the construction cheaper. Um, because when you're buying ready-made formats, they can be quite expensive. And especially in Ghana, there isn't any, there isn't really an industry for Ramdev. So the only formats that you can really buy are for concrete. So there isn't one for Ramdev. So importing Ramdev formats can be quite expensive. Um, and then also that cost gets passed onto the job. And then also um, number two, it gives you the flexibility to work anywhere. So if we get a job in Nigeria in a rural village, or if we get a job in the North, we know that we can get all the tools and equipments that we need in and around the area. And um, we just know that we need, you know, plywood boards and whatnot. And then also when you're making your own formworks, you have a lot more flexibility with the design of the building. So normally we find with ready-made formworks, you're quite limited to, what design you want so it might the the ready-made formats can maybe build just one type of wall like maybe just like a normal i don't know seven foot four by four foot wall or something whereas with the ready-made form with the formats that you make yourself you can make different types of wall shape sizes heights you can have arcs all of that so with the um formats that you make yourself you just have a lot more flexibility in terms of where you can work the cost and then also with the type of design that you want to achieve with your with your round earth walls. So once you've done your um, formworks is all ready, then the next thing you do is you create your mix. So um, we always do our mix after we've done our, our formworks because you've got to make sure that your mix is always damp. Like in Ghana, for example, it's really hot. So if you're making your mix, and then you leave it and then you go into your formwork. Then by the time it comes to you to pour your mix into the formwork, your mix might have dried out. So we always make sure that our formwork is ready before we pour our mix. So um, when we do pour our mix, um, we always make sure that we spread it out within the formwork so that it's even. And then we always make sure that we ram the outside first so that because the outside is going to be where um, you're probably going to get a lot of, um, I don't know, like maybe somebody might be leaning on it or there might be potential, not damage, but you want to make sure that all the particles of the earth is really compressed. So we always make sure you start from the outside, you ram, and then you ram the middle because the outside is going to be more exposed than the inside of the, of the rammed earth wall. So... So with the ramming, um, there's two types of ramming that you can do. So you can have, you can use the pneumatic rammer and then you can use a manual rammer. So in the past, we have used pneumatic rammers before. Um, we don't use them too much now. We, we actually haven't used them for a while. There's a story behind that. So when we first started with our company, we imported um, loads of pneumatic rammers. And when we were doing a project and then we realized one by one, they started to break down. And because we were like one of the first ram dev companies in Ghana at the time, when the um, pneumatic ram is broke down, there wasn't anybody around to fix them. Like people didn't even know what it was. So it was quite difficult to get somebody to repair it. So that made us switch to a manual ramming. But then we found that with the manual ramming, we found that our walls actually turned out nicer and we were able to experiment more with design. We've, we found that with the manual ramming, we were able to achieve more of the layers. You know, with our walls, we do a lot of layers where it's, um, it's more wavy than straight. So we found that with the manual ramming, we were able to achieve that because we were able to control how we rammed. Um, and then also we found that with the manual ramming, <clears throat> excuse me, with the manual ramming, 
it made the cost of the project cheaper because with pneumatic rammers, you have to buy diesel to power your compressor to ram the wall. So we found that with manual ramming, that cost is, is out. And then also you get to employ more people. So with the manual rammer, with the manual rammers, maybe you can employ two or three more people to join your team. Whereas with the pneumatic rammers, it's just one person. Um, and then also we just thought after a while we thought that it was it was quite nice to actually have a site that was quiet and all you can hear is just the rhythm the rhythm of the ramming so we decided that okay let's you know ditch the pneumatic rammers and let's go with the manual rammers um and then we also thought that it was quite I don't know, a little bit contradictory, like if you're building a sustainable building, if you're building an eco-friendly building that you're going to have to use a compressor and um, use fuel to power a compressor to build it. So we just thought it just made more sense for us um, to go with the manual ramming. I don't know, maybe in the future we might switch back to pneumatic rammers, but um, we're, we're loving the, the um, manual ramming for now because we get to create amazing looking walls with the manual ramming. So um, once you're done with your ramming and um, then you take your formworks off um, and then you'll see that, you know, within the wall, your electrical um, wires or the electrical, um, yeah, electrical wires and then the um, plumbing tubes and all of that is already incorporated into the wall. So when it comes to you connecting your, <clears throat> connecting your electricity to your building, it's just a matter of just feeding the wires through the tubes and then connecting it to your to your sockets and you also see that the window framing and all of that is already within the walls so that's one advantage of building with rammed earth <clears throat> as compared to blocks you don't have to um you know you don't build your block wall you don't build your rammed earth wall and then you go and you know cut part of the wall and you put your electrical sockets in no all of it it's already it comes up in situ with the wall so when you're built when you're building your ramdef wall all of the electrical and um, plumbing is already ready for you to 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 go um so once you're done with the um once you've taken off your formworks then it's time to cure the walls so normally we don't always use plastic to cure our walls. Normally we use a DPM, but on, on this occasion we didn't have any DPM lying around. So normally we put a thick sheet or DPM on the walls um, and then we just leave it on there until we're ready to attach our roofing, attach our doors, attach our windows. Um, so the curing allows for the wall to really, to really sweat. So we normally leave it to cure for a couple of weeks, maybe every few days we'll come back, we'll take the DPM off and then maybe the TPM off and then maybe we'll just sprinkle a little bit of water onto the walls just so it's really, really curing. Um, but the curing process just allows it to just really, you know, dry out and harden. Because essentially with a rammed earth wall, what you're doing, you're building a man-made sedimentary rock. So the more, water that you put on the wall when it's done and then the more that you leave it out to dry and cure the harder it's becoming so once it's completely cured then that's when we add on our sealant onto the walls so yeah so that's the the round of process in a nutshell <clears throat> so i'll just take you through different types of earth construction and um, that we have done in the in the past so um Unstabilized rammed earth construction is basically um, rammed earth walls without any stabilizer or without any chemical stabilizer, without any cement in it. Um, and that's actually where we really want to go because we feel like true rammed earth is without any cement in it. So this is um, a wall that we um, built. This, this um, over here was straight excavated from the site. Um, so no cement in it at all. Um, and in this building, the walls here, here and here are all unstabilized rammed earth walls, um, but we stabilize them with lime. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, at the moment, we do a lot of stabilized rammed earth walls, um, but that's more to the client's request. But we really want to um, do a lot more unstabilized rammed earth walls because we feel you know, for it to be truly sustainable, unstabilized is the way to go. And even, and um, there's a lot of companies, even in Europe, um, like LEM, for example, and um, I think they're based in Belgium, if, I believe. 
I think so, Belgium, and then, you know, BC Materials also, they are pioneers in unstabilised Ramdef walls, and they have walls that are going up multi-storeys that are all unstabilised. So it's definitely something that can be done. Um, and it's definitely something that we want to start doing more of in Ghana. Um, but, you know, at the moment, because Ramdef is still relatively new in Ghana, we feel just to give clients a lot more confidence um, if we said that they're cementing it, then they're more likely to go for it. But um, yeah, after some time, unstabilized is how we want to go to be truly, truly eco-friendly. Um, so these are some of our stabilized Ramdef walls that we've done in the past. Um, so we don't use more than 8% cement in our walls. Um, in some of our stabilized Ramdef walls, we've, we've used as little as just 3%. Um, but yeah, I mean, with the stabilised round death walls, um, you can see that they're going up multi-storeys, but that's not to say that unstabilised round death walls cannot also go up multi-storeys as well. Um, so yeah, so we've also done poured earth walls as well. So poured earth is basically similar to liquid concrete, but this is just liquid earth. So that's something that we want to do. This is something that we want to do more of in the future. Um, so for this project, we used about 3% um, cement for this. Um, but yeah, this is just another type of um, earth construction that you can have besides rammed earth. If you're looking for more of a smoother, shinier finish, then poured earth or cast earth is a, is a, is a great alternative to poured concrete. Um, and then prefab rammed earth. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are companies um, in Europe that are pioneers in, you know, prefab rammed earth like LEM. They go up multi-stories and they create these huge rammed earth cubes that they make um, in their facility and then they transport it to the site. So we actually tried um, to do some prefab rammed earth um, R&D. Um, so as you can see here, this was a brand of panel that we created on the site and we tried to um, transport it to another site. Um, it was really difficult to actually do it. Um, I mean, obviously the ramming of the wall was simple, but transporting it from one site to the other wasn't as easy as we thought we was, but it was more so, I wouldn't say it was the, the ram of panel itself. It was more so the logistics of getting it from one site to another. Um, and obviously in Ghana, just simple things like the roads are not as smooth as the roads that you'd get in maybe say Europe, for example. So um, we're still looking into ways that we can make that process easier because if we're able to do more prefab ram death, then we'll be able to cover more ground in terms of providing more um, ram death walls for multiple projects instead of just building at, on one site at a time, building in situ on the site. So we're, we're looking into ways that we can create prefab rammed earth panels in one location and maybe send them out to, you know, multiple sites across West Africa, not just in Ghana. And then, and, oh, and then also the great thing about prefab rammed earth panels is that you can go up multiple, multiple stories. Um, you know, I know that I think there was a project where it went up six six stories in Europe where they use prefab rammed earth panels. I know that there's been some um, um, ambitious projects where they want to go up 12 stories with rammed earth panels. So with rammed earth panels, it just allows for more flexibility and, you know, you can go up as tall as you want with, with rammed earth. So just gonna tell you about some projects that we've just finished working on. So this is an art gallery project which we've just completed um, in Accra. Um, around Labadi. So this is going up three stories and um, this is all stabilized rammed earth. Um, and then also this is a project that we is currently under construction. This one's going up four stories. Um, this was all done in situ on the site. Um, so you've got your huge rammed earth walls there and then you've got rammed earth fins as well. So Yes, yeah, so I think that's the end of my presentation, but I just also wanted to add that, um, you know, for us, for the future of Ramd Earth, we really want to, um, you know, we feel like it's really important that a lot more people know 
especially architects know how to build with Ramdev or now to design with Ramdev. So we're really looking into um, doing a lot more training when it comes to Ramdev um, because we feel that it's still quite a small industry, especially in Africa or West Africa. There's not many people that are doing it. Um, so yeah, we're really looking into doing more training sessions, working with, you know, architects, doing more research into other um, locally sourced materials, as I was saying before, like with palm kernel, with rice husk as well. Um, but yeah, we're looking to do a lot more training and to, you know, work with a lot more architects and hopefully have a lot more earth builders on the continent or in the world. Um, but yeah, we definitely need a lot more earth builders in, um, in, in Africa. So yeah, that is the end of my presentation. I hope I didn't bore you guys. <laughs> So, yeah, if you have any um, questions. Thank you very much, uh, Joel. Very, very nice uh, presentation and really congratulations for the amazing job you have done and the company you've raised with your uh, partner. Uh, it's, it's been it's been um, incredible to to hear from you. And and we love to know that you are going to um, work on helping architects to know more about this uh, material and uh, i'm sure the webinars and workshops that you prepare and all these trainings are going to be very useful and we are looking forward also to collaborate in the near future because i think we we share uh, the same vision and and well thank you so much yeah thank you okay um well i i wanted to um first ask you, uh, well, the vision for Hive Earth, you've mm -hmm. already mentioned that maybe uh, you want to, well, summarize. yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, so at the moment, we're, we're still doing um, a lot of construction um, services. Um, but in the near future, we are looking to pull back on providing construction services, um, only because we really want to start training a lot more people. I mean, we get a lot of inquiries, so many inquiries of people that want to build in Ghana, or in Nigeria, like all over the continent, even in the States, um, even in the UAE as well. So um, we feel that there's, there's a lot of architects also that are looking into building with more natural materials and are becoming a lot more eco-conscious. Not even just architects, but people in general are becoming a lot more eco-conscious of the materials that they use in their buildings and the materials that they build with. So we really want to um, start looking into training more people and to be knowledgeable with Ramdurf, how to build with it, how to design with it. So we are looking to do a lot of workshops later on this year, early next year, um, from our studio in Accra and maybe in other um, locations around the world. And just, just teaching people about Ramdurf and how to, how to build with it, how to design with it, how to get started. And yeah, hopefully we want to also train a lot more earth builders as well, because as I said, the the amount of work that is out there or the amount of people that want earth homes or earth buildings is not something that we can do alone so mm -hmm. we think also for the greater good of the planet it's it's important to have a lot more earth builders out there yeah i definitely agree so can we buy hive earth from anywhere or just in accra how do you mean what the material or yeah. no this. no i mean we don't we haven't got any like packaged earth or anything like that. So with our training, we will teach you how to select earth. So wherever you are, we'll teach you like, this is what you need in your earth. You need this much clay, you need this much seal, you need this. So we'll, we'll teach you how to know what to put in your mix so that wherever you are in the world, you'll know that this is the components that I need in my earth to be able to build a strong earth wall. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay, so um, maybe we can start with some of the questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here is Hero Outdoors uh, asking, what are the main and max depth, width and height of Ram Earth walls you produce? Um. I mean, it depends. It really depends on the design. I mean, whatever design you bring to us, then we can build as high as you want, 
as small as you want, as big as you want. In terms of our thickness, um, the smallest, the, the thinnest thickness that we've built is um, seven inches. And then we can build anything up to 20, even 30 inches thick of a wall. But our average thickness wall is 15 inches. But in terms of height, we can go as high as you want. And length can go as, as high as you want. We've built 40 foot, 40 foot wide walls before, 60 feet wide walls. So it, it really depends on the on the design of the building. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, next questions from Proyectos Arque. Uh, mm -hmm. They are asking for the textures in the ramp wall. Do you work it in the frameworks or is a job made afterwards? Yeah, so we buy a stencil and then we just put it in the formwork and then we just ram around that stencil and then once you take your formwork off, then the stencil will show the, the pattern on the wall. Okay. Yeah, so it, okay. it depends. I mean, sometimes we can even make our own stencils and then we will screw it to the formwork um, so that it doesn't move whilst you're, whilst you're ramming. So it, it really depends on what type of pattern you're trying to create if you're trying to create a pattern where it's all over the formwork then maybe we'll you know buy a metal sheeting um mm -hmm. and then we'll get it specially made and then we'll just attach it to the formwork and then whilst you're ramming then when the formwork comes off then it just shows the, the pattern on the wall it was just one small stencil then we'll actually screw it to the formwork and then we'll just ram around it and then take it off when it's when we take the formex off. Okay, so you adapt depending on the uh, yeah. requirements of the mm, texture or whatever. Okay, yes. got it. Okay. Next question, uh, well, again, from the same um, person. They are asking, what's the minimum thickness on of the walls? I think you have already said that, yeah. right? Seven yeah. inches? Yes, yeah. Okay. Another question. Juan Izquierdo Carabe. Hi, how are the connections between the roof and the top of the walls sorted out? So we normally add, um, like maybe we'll just add, let's say that when we're done with the ram def walls, we could either add a, a metal lip or like a wooden lip on top of, a uh, coping, sorry, on top of the ram def wall. And then you just have your normal wood trusses and then you just put your roofing on or we can add um, concrete on top of the wall and then you just have your normal wood trusses and then you just add your roofing on as, as normal, just like a normal concrete wall. Okay. Okay, thank you, Joel. Next, Camille Young is asking, which post-Olanic binders, binders work best and are the most environmental friendly for stabilized ram earth? For stabilized, so we so for stabilized ram def, we just use normal Portland cement as a stabilizer. Um, but if you wanted to use unstabilized, well, yeah, if you want to use unstabilized ram def, an unstabilized ram def binder, you can use lime. You can use um, maybe you can just use stones. Um, crushed granite is a good stabilizer. Um, but in terms of stabilize, we just use normal Portland cement to, to stabilize our wall if you wanted to stabilize around their wall. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Next question from Murad Ake. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing well the names, but I, <laughs> I am doing my best. Um, which material is used for the floor in multi-story buildings and what is the method? So for now, for the framing of a building, we just use concrete. So just normal concrete for the structure of the building. And then we put our ram def walls on it. There hasn't been a lot of research that we have done into using ram def completely for the structure. Um, so yeah, so for now, we just use normal concrete for the structure of a multi-story story building. Okay. Okay. And uh, Brian Latouche, what kind of foundations do you use for the walls? Um, it, it depends on the type of building that you're going to have. So we've used multiple types of foundations. We've used a stone foundation before. 
Um, this was for a mount, a project that we did in the mountains. There was a lot, of, it was a very rocky terrain. So we just crushed the stones that was in the area when we were excavating the soil and crushed them. And then we just mixed it with a cement slurry and then we used that as a foundation. We've also done a rammed earth foundation before where we, you know, dug down, used DPM and then we just rammed. Um, and then we just brought up our rammed earth walls um, for the kicker and the actual rammed earth wall as well. Um, and then we've used, normally we use a, a concrete foundation. Um, if you're going multi-stories, then I'd advise to use a concrete foundation. But um, yeah, it really depends on the type of product that you're using. Um, so yeah, we've used, we've even used bricks before um, for a foundation. So it really depends on the type of product that you're doing. Okay, great. Uh, okay. I... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's a complicated name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Compact. Uh, can you use RAM Earth in other elements than wall, like as an as a structure for the roof or something? Um, we haven't done it before, but I have seen um a RAM Earth roof done before. Like, I think it was a company in Thailand that they did the walls and it came up like a gable RAM Earth. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely something that can be done, but we haven't done it before. What we do do, we do make our own ram, not rammed up, but we make our own roof tiles. So it's the same material, but it's just not rammed. Um, and instead of it being a dry mix, it's a wet mix. And then we just lay it out in the sun, it dries, and then we use that as our roofing tiles. Um, but yeah, as I said, we haven't done a rammed up roof before, but I know it's something that definitely can be done. Okay, uh, Viram is asking, do you commonly use RAM earth walls for interior separations or exclusively in exterior walls? No, we can use RAM earth for interior walls as well, not just the exterior, but then it depends on how complete the project is. Um, if if it's for a building that the roof is already on, then we couldn't do the RAM earth because you need space to actually RAM the walls. Um, but yeah, I mean, round earth walls can be used for interior and exterior. Sometimes what we do with that is the exterior walls are normally thicker and then the interior walls are normally slimmer. So maybe the exterior walls will be 15 inches or above and then the interior walls can be seven inches or 10 inches or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, we can, you can use it for both interior and exterior. Okay. And next question, well, people are very active. They are asking. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, Jose, uh, he's asking, are there any limitations in the production process of RAM earth materials in local factories, such as maximum height or handling size? How do you communicate effectively with local workers? Okay, so are there any limitations in the production process of RAM earth materials in local factories? Um. So I'm guessing you're inquiring about prefab rammed earth. So, I mean, we we don't run a prefab rammed earth factory, but from what I've seen, I know that um, the walls, they don't go maybe as high as if you was to build in situ on the site. So maybe there are some sort of limitations, maybe depending on the type of equipment that you have in order to carry the rammed earth. And I know that with um, the company that I was talking about in Europe, I know that they don't work too far from where their production factory is if they're doing prefab, um, maybe because of, I don't know, handling the rammed earth walls from lo one location to another might be too far. Um, I'm not too sure. Um, so how do you how do you communicate effectively with local workers? Do you mean in terms of the prefab or do you communicate with local workers? Okay, so I'm guessing maybe it's just to do with the ram death in general. Um, 
So, I mean, with us, we have our workers that work with us already, but then we do a lot of um, community projects as well. So let's say, for example, if we're doing a community project with an NGO, a lot of the time they want us to train people in the community so they also get some sort of skill. Um, so normally what we do, maybe we'll do like a few weeks training with them. Um, and then once we've done the training with them, then we let them do maybe the easier jobs on the sites, maybe just ramming um, and not so much the form works. And then as when we see that they're getting more confident with the ram birth, then maybe we'll introduce them to how to put the form works together and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, if we're doing a community project, then we always train before we um, start any construction. Okay, thank you, Joel. Okay, so I will ask the last questions because um, maybe we can be here. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, so another question. Um, do you produce any technical documentation or drawings of your process to capture your R&D process for future improvements that can be read for innovation ideas? Honestly, we, we, don't, to, we don't actually do that. We should. <laughs> Um, I think in terms of capturing our R and D, it's probably just you know written down and maybe captured in pictures or in video and whatnot. If we if we do an R and D where we are working with an architect, then that's something that they require. So we do that specifically for them. So for example, um, with the the palm kernel tiles that we did, we had to produce a document, a technical document for um the architects so that you know they were aware of what was actually going into the product and whatnot and um, but in terms of our own r d we we don't um tend to do that and and also also honestly we, we don't get a lot of time to do r d so one of the reasons why we really want to get into more training so that we can have more time and also we can um network with a lot more um like-minded people because we find that you know, when we're doing training, we also get to connect with architects and they can also bring their ideas and they might also want to, I don't know, document, you know, down things of how we can make improvements in the future for it. So, um, yeah, we don't do that now at the moment, but it's, it's definitely something that we should do. And we're open to taking on interns that maybe might be interested in doing that for us. So, so yeah. Well, there is always room for uh, yes. progress. So, so yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. So uh, Leo is asking, how is RAM Earth technology being perceived by professional users, builders, and the public in general? How do you see it evolving in the future? Um, I think, so I, the perception out there is quite good in Ghana, surprisingly. Um, you know, normally with Earth buildings, it's something that's normally associated with the poor. Um, but we've had a really, like, shockingly, a really good um, re re reception when it comes to earth construction. But with other professional builders, they are quite sceptical of it because, you know, especially in Ghana, where most people are just used to building with concrete or used to building with sandcrete blocks, um, we have had quite a lot of conflict in terms of convincing people that this is something that's strong this is something that works this is something that is stable it's not going to crumble when you you know start building with it so I think with the public it's been received really well but honestly with other builders that hasn't been received as well as we thought um but as I said I guess it's, they've just been used to building with concrete for so long it's something that works for them and then you know we're going to come and say that oh you know you can build with earth you don't have to use that much cement you know it's a completely different technique than concrete construction um so yeah we, we've had a bit of pushback from other and um, professionals in 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 our in the construction industry in ghana and joel i wanted to ask you what about the price compared so, from earth to concrete or other materials yes yeah, so it really depends on how you're doing um, the the ram def. So, in general, I would say that ram def construction is is round about the same price as as you know your normal conventional sandcrete block construction. In some cases, it might even be a little bit more expensive. Um, and it's 
And I would only say that because of the labor that's involved, like ram death is very, very labor intensive. Like your labor cost will, is what will take up most of your, um, of your, of your budget. Um, but then if you're doing like a community project where, you know, labor is volunteering, then it's definitely going to be a lot more cheaper than if you also go with normal concrete block construction um because you know maybe you can get your materials locally if you're lucky you can get the materials on the site so you're not paying for the cost of the materials maybe the only cost you will have will be the formworks and you know making the rammers and whatnot um but yeah i'll say that your biggest cost is labor so if you're going to go for a company or if you're going to um i don't know build like a huge building then ramdev can be a little bit more expensive than normal concrete construction but if you're doing a community project then i would say that it's cheaper so actually like the project that we are designing for teach on the beach uh, yes. a community project the own volunteers and ngo who builds it so yes in this case okay yeah Good yeah yeah yes, okay definitely. so i will ask the last question uh and the rest we will welcome you to write Joel in the in her website. You can find in Hive Earth website. You can find her email uh, info at hiveearth.com. Uh, yes. So yes. feel free to contact her for more uh, questions. But this is the last one, okay? okay. Um, in the process of making the wall, do you put steel rods to make sure it's more safe or secure to movements like earthquakes? Um, no, we don't add um, iron rods in our in our walls because ram death walls are already load bearing, so there's, it's not necessary to add um, iron rods to our to our walls. I mean, you know, compared to you know sandcrete blocks or block construction, because it's it's not monolithic like ram death. Um, it has like loads of mortar joints in it, but with ram death, because it's like one huge solid wall. Um, it hasn't got any joints in it, so we don't add we don't add um, an iron rod to it at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, as I said before, like with ram death, it's basically like you're making a man-made sedimentary rock. So over time, it becomes harder. Um, it becomes as harder stone. So I even remember like one of our first projects um, that we were doing a multi-story building, and one of the walls didn't come out as well as we wanted, and I think the wall was it was like two or three days old. So we thought, okay, let's just push it off the edge of the building and then we'll see if it breaks. And it didn't even break. Like it was a solid wall on the floor. So it was like, okay, wow. And this is something that was just like a two, three day old wall. So you can imagine how strong it becomes over time with, you know, the weather, rain, sunshine, rain, sunshine, it becomes stronger. So yeah, there's no need to add, um, well, we don't add iron rods into our um, walls because it's, it's already load bearing, so. Yes. Okay. This is very interesting because one of the main concerns is about the dura durability of this material, but if it becomes stronger, yeah. uh, it's definitely an advantage. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Joel, for the amazing uh, information that you share with us and for your patience and uh, your dedication answering every one of all the questions that we, we made. And uh, well, thank you so much also for being our jury. We will uh, again be in touch in July for the deliberation of the competition. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. No, it's, it's been really good. I've um, had a good time. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting everyone's questions via my email. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm ready because I can see there's more questions. So, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, and thank you everyone for joining uh, today. Um, I remember you, the competition is still on tomorrow. It's the last day for the early bird registration. And um, also I will remember you that we have another uh, webinar coming on May 24th. So welcome to join us. And thank you so much for being here. Till the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.